So why should we care about those little crabs? They're so small, and they don't seem to be very important. That's a question many scientists are asked. Christine Diamani is studying one of the tiniest kinds of hermit crabs, a creature that's so small it's often overlooked by most of us. Yet Christine believes that the health and welfare of this creature may tell us a lot about what goes on in the estuary. I study these hermit crabs and you can see that this hermit crab's kind of fuzzy. Um, so what the fuzzy thing is, is a hydroid called snail fur, which is kind of like a sea anemone or a jellyfish. It's in the same family. And because they are related to jellyfish, they have stinging cells called nematocysts like jellyfish. And so there are pros and cons to living in a shell with hydroids. So one of the cons, obviously, is that you get stung. I seem to be finding that hermit crabs that live in hydroid-covered shells have fewer eggs. So the hydroids may be um, consuming the eggs, possibly. Um, some of the benefits to having hydroids on your shell are that when something tries to eat you, um, it'll come into contact with the hydroids and get stung. Stinging hydroids directly affect the number of eggs produced by hermit crabs. But the hydroids indirectly benefit the hermit crabs by keeping predators at bay. Ecologists are beginning to um, realize that indirect effects may be important when you're trying to understand what happens in an entire community. So if you're trying to um, manage a species or try to understand what happens when a species is lost from a community or when you introduce a species into a community, then you want to understand not only how that species affects others directly but also indirectly. So what I was doing out there is I was looking at what else is in the community with the hermit crab that could possibly eat the hermit crabs and, and be stung by the hydroids. The Rachel Carson Estuarine Reserve offers Christine a field laboratory with easy access and plentiful test subjects. There's good populations of hermit crabs there that are really close. I don't have to take a motorboat. I can either canoe or I can kayak. Um, and I don't, I don't really think that there's another population of hermit crabs where I could close enough by where, you know, it would be that big that I would feel justified in collecting the numbers that I need for this study. So we got 100 hermit crabs and we brought them back into the lab. And so what we're doing right now is we're taking them out of their shells um, and doing the shell measurements to see, you know, is this shell damaged? Um, what species of shell do they prefer? Is there a particular species of shell that the hydroids colonize more than other species of shell? Um, and then we're also doing crab measurements. So we're measuring the length of the crab. We're looking to see what sex they are, whether they're male or female. Um, if they have eggs, we're counting them to see if crabs with hydroids have fewer eggs than crabs without hydroids. Christine believes that her hard work and the skill she's mastered will ultimately benefit the environment and allow her to pursue a satisfying and rewarding career. I'd like to work for a conservation organization. Um, in this program, I'm getting a lot of really good knowledge about um, how to do an experiment and um, how to do a lot of things like plumbing and <laughs> um, I, I have to I had to do the plumbing for all of my seawater tanks um, learning how to sample um, learning how to do computer programs and how to analyze data are all really important skills um, I've always I've always liked being outside and I've always liked working with animals and plants and I always knew that that's what I wanted to do.